Okay, we had just finished number eight, and the only thing we didn't do before I stopped the video was cross out our 30 and cross out dollars per month. So cross out the 30, cross out the dollars per month. So hopefully between videos, I hope you got to work some of these. So I'm just going to go through them, see how you did. It's kind of nice when you have the answers because if your answer is not on the sheet, then you know you made a mistake. And it's usually about order. Students didn't follow what I said. Time first, dollar second. So that's usually the problem. So that's pretty much a given that time's going to be first. I'm sure there's exceptions, but I can't think of any off my top of my head. Okay, let's look at number nine. Whoa. Okay, so there's nine and here's nine. So on Monday, Martha's grade in Math 090 was 80%. So Monday, that's time, right? And 80%. Two days later, that's time. 90%. So this really confuses students because they go, do I call Monday zero or do I call it one? You know what? doesn't matter as long as the next number's two larger because it says two days later. So generally, um, what Mondays? I don't know if we call Monday the first day of the week. Yeah, well, we'll just call Monday one. So this is going to be one. We'll just say first day of the week. Two days later, one plus two, so this number will be three. So sometimes they make you think a little bit because obviously you can't have your X be Monday. How are you going to find the slope of two days minus Monday? So we'll just call Monday day one. And like I said, you could have called it day zero. So if you did this ahead of time and called it zero and this two, that's fine. You'll get the same answer as long as you add two to this to get the second number. So it's looking like our order pairs, and this one again is rate of change, are going to be time, one, first day of the week, grade, 80%. Time, two days later, one plus two is three, grade, 90%. So what is the rate of change? In other words, we want to know y per x. So let's see this is. This is days. And y is percent. So when they ask for rate of change and we think y per x, we want to know percent per day. So what is, what is her percentage per day increasing by? So her... Um, you could say she is increasing by 10% per day or 5% per day or whatever it is. Okay, let's trans this up, translate this over to our page. So we have the order pair 180 and 390. And this is days, and this is percent. So y per x would be percent per day. And then this is our x1, this is our y1, x2, y2. So then we're going to find our slope. Second y minus the first y over second x minus the first x. So 90 minus 80 over 3 minus 1. Remember the x's always go in the denominator, so second y minus first y over second x minus first x. And that is what, 10 over 2, which simplifies to 5. Then we have to put our label on, percent per day. And usually on something like this, you want to say whether it's going up or going down. Like gym membership, obviously, it 
the total you pay is increasing 30% for every month you're in the gym. But this, you, the reader doesn't really know whether it's going up or going down. So when you go to write your sentence, you really should make sure you say increasing. So if it was negative, you'd say decreasing. If it's positive, you say increasing. So this was Martha's grade. So we could say Martha's grade was increasing, because it's positive, by 5% per day. For our sentence. So Martha's grade was increasing. This is so much more fun when the students are at the board teaching this. Increasing by 5% per day. That is number nine. So let's go to our little paper. So our number was five. And it was percent per day. So percent per day. So we're down to the last five. Okay, so everybody get that. So next we have number ten. So 10 says at an internet cafe, oh, let's get this straight. At an internet cafe, the cost of wireless internet, the cost of wireless internet, $3 for a half an hour. The cost of wireless internet is okay, $3 for half an hour. It costs $15 for two and a half hours. What is the average cost? So that would be like, what does one hour cost? Right? Average cost, so cost per hour with respect to time. So our first order pair looks like it's going to be, do you think it will be three comma one half? not why time is first so most students miss this one when we're doing it in class they're like our number's not there that's because the problem won't always give it to you in the proper order you just have to remember oh, miss norris told us time is first so that means half an hour three dollars so this is hours this is money and then uh, time first, 2.5 hours, $15. Okay, so let's go ahead and transfer this to our page. Okay, so we have a blurry screen. So one half hour, that's not getting any better, is it? Yikes. I can honestly say I've never had this happen. Let me hold the button. There we go. Wow, that was scary. One half hour, three dollars. So this is hours and this is dollars. And again, I knew to put the time first because that's just, like I said, 99% of the time, time is first. 2.5 hours cost $15. So there's our order pairs. And what I notice a discrepancy here is this is a fraction, this is a decimal, and you kind of want to keep them the same. So let's change that to 0.5. Is everybody okay with that for a half? If you're not okay with it, all you have to do on your calculator is 1 divided by 2. 
and it gives you 0 0.5 because you're not really supposed to mix units like a fraction with a decimal so we want to keep them straight here so m equals second y minus first y over second x minus first x so second y is 15 minus the first y which is 3 the second x is 2.5 minus the first x is half an hour, which is 0 0.5. And that gives us 12 over 2, which is 6. So now we have to decide what to label it, and that's where you should write this, just to remind you of the order. One of the hardest things for students is to remember that order. I just say, if you say it enough, it's just going to pop in your head when you take your test. Y per X. So dollars per hour. So dollars per hour. So now we have to write a sentence. So the average cost of the Internet Cafe is six dollars per hour i'm off the page a little bit okay i gotta put my paper clip in it drives me crazy when my paper's not all lined up super anal okay the internet cafe Average cost is six dollars per hour. So the internet cafe's average cost is six dollars per hour. So basically, I just rewrite what they ask. What is the internet cafe's average cost? Then I just rewrite it. Okay, so number 11. Concession stand at the amusement park began the day with 700. So began the day. Remember how I said, look for time. Time is usually your X. So began the day. So what time do you think that would be? Zero or one? Doesn't matter. Again, just like this one. Whatever you call this, just make sure you add 3 for the second one. So we'll call began the day 0. 700 popcorn containers, that looks like that's going to be the Y. 3 hours later, so 0 plus 3 would be 3. It had 400 popcorn containers. What is the rate of change? So right there, that's your hint to find slope. So 0 goes with 700, and 3 goes with 400. And 0 is hours, because it says 3 hours later. And Y is popcorn containers. Okay, let's transfer that over. And you know what? I don't think we um, did the Internet Cafe. We didn't cross it out. So it was $6 per hour. Okay, so we got the top four to go. So number 11, we want to put 0, 700 and three four hundred let's transfer our labels over so this is zero hours so remember zero hours means at the beginning this is three hours later so this could be nine and twelve this could be eight and eleven just three hours later it doesn't matter just add three to get to the second number and this is popcorn containers Okay, so we are ready to go. So it says, what is the rate of change? That means how many popcorn containers are they using per 
hour. So y per x. That's what we're trying to find. Because I kind of always keep that in the back of my mind so I know what it is I'm finding. 